we go. Hello, this is Ellen Mongan, and welcome to Deacon and Deer. I'm the deer, and you are the Deacon. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some guests today, and but first, Pat's going to share a little bit what we're going to talk about, and then we're going to invite our guests to come and join us to the conversation. We've been talking about what? Pitfalls in marriage. What's a pitfall? Oh, people don't really have problems in their marriage, do they? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> not <laughs> <either. laughs> Never. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing is, is that we want to talk about them because it's real that you know people do have pitfalls and they need to learn to deal with them and, uh, so we've been reading books about marriage and love languages and uh, uh, apology languages and we've looked and read several books and a couple that we wanted to point out is this, this, is, is, this is the one we're reading right now the one of which you never it's, remember it's the title. Kind of, it's kind of an older book. <laughs> Read the title though, because you yeah. forget it. Forgetting the Impossible, Intimate Marriage. <clears throat> and it's, it's got some funny stories in it, but it's uh, uh, important, I think, in terms of growing in intimacy. And so we're learning something. We learn a little something with each book. Um, if you get it all together, then you, you don't need these books, but I don't know <laughs> many people who are books. in that situation. You don't and then, yeah. then this this one, which I think we've mentioned before. Oh, Boundaries in Marriage. Boundaries yeah. in Marriage, yeah. because good. both of these cover a pretty large areas of, of marriage. So those are two good books uh, and resources for people. Because, you know, the idea of, of um, a counselor can be expensive and um, if mm -hmm. you can without having to go to a counselor and you, you can you know some churches offer services but um, there are friends who can maybe help too you got to yeah. be careful with that you yeah, might lose your friend yeah. 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 <laughs> or maybe the friend that listens sides with you every time and then you got to go okay that's right, not right, that's right. yeah you know, really really be careful in your marriage where you open your mouth and what you say but um, pat actually is and i have decided to go a route in marriage where we we read books together and learn as we go. And it's been it's been making us more oneness in our era intellectually and spiritually as well. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And so we are going to introduce our guests. Well, <laughs> the bomb breaks. The bomb breaks. <laughs> so where did that name come from? <laughs> Tell people where the, the, the name comes from, bond break. What are, where is that name? It's got a German background to it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that, it's that. And so... Tell us a little we're bit. We're so glad that. to be. We're so glad to be here with y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Can you tell yeah, us about this? Too. I'm so sorry. So I thought we, you know, one of the ways to open up. Some, yeah, sorry. just a second. But I'm it's, sorry. It, in terms of introduce yourself <laughs> so funny. about your Thanksgiving. Tell us about what your Thanksgiving and what a bond break Thanksgiving is like. Large. Large. A <laughs> lot of people. 30, 35, 34 pounds of turkey. Poof. Gone. Two big birds gone. <laughs> Let me tell you what, and plenty of food and laughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah. It was plenty a lot of, of fun. laughter. You know, y'all have a lot of children and grandchildren. So when y'all get together, it's, you know, you always got, there always is funny stories. Oh, yeah. So many funny stories. But we did, uh, we chose to be Thanksgiving alone, Pat and I, this year. So it was not lonely at all. It was great. It's when we lived in Florida just alone. The two it, was, of us. it was just the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we said you don't do that. It was an incident with um, animals. So tell us who you are, where you're from, and, and how many children you have, because they're wanting to know. The audience wants to know. Uh, okay, we've got 11 children. We have uh, six girls and five boys. And started out with the daughter, and then five boys came right behind. So you know the boys. And, uh, and then the little girls, but uh, yeah, we've been married going on 29 years, wow. and it has been it's had its highs and lows, you know, and that's what we're going to talk a journey. about. A journey, boy, what a journey! Yeah, and <laughs> anyway, it, it's good. You got it's a beautiful so wife, you know, and the big family, they all come over and eat, so everybody was here. Oh, so how, how many are married? One. Wow. One, one engaged. One engaged, one grandson. Congratulations. So we just had uh, our youngest get married. So we only have one left to get married. So <laughs> you, you have another part of your journey that's uh, no, coming along going. the way here. So who yeah. got married? Uh, our oldest, the daughter. And then yeah. the daughter. we're thinking one of the boys is going to get married. Well, one's engaged. Nice. Uh, he's number three. No, number four. He's the fourth child. Uh -huh. And he's engaged. The number three in the boys. Number three in the boys, yeah. 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 So, you know, the, uh, 
when they start getting married, they'll probably be in a row. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting, and you do stretch and grow. I used to tell um, people that when you have a lot of little children, life's really busy, but it does slow down as they get older. Then I just had to go back and say, no, it gets busier. <laughs> you add yes. it, you add it, oh, right, right. Right. Yeah. It's now we have year. fourteen kids in a sense because we got fourteen grandkids. So you know, wow, and and all their activities and you as you get up you just can't possibly go to everything that's going on you know yes yeah. uh, but you grow along the way you strengthen and grow so i was going to say is that do, um do you all want to share about any particular pitfalls in marriage because we're going to begin talking about it because it's been like we've done three shows on this and it's been really kind of it's been fun kind of discovering certain things we are we've learned solutions for and other things we have not yet and then that's always the fun and we invite the audience later to to email us or tell them what we can help them with. Right. Not the ones we're not succeeding at. If you think <laughs> you've arrived in your marriage, <laughs> so and, and you probably have a long way to go. <laughs> so where should you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where should we start? Well, so uh, what What are the areas that uh, you're willing to share? <laughs> that have been the, the most difficult in terms of, and you've learned along the way, solutions. Well, I think I think you know on our part is you know we kind of feed off each other you know who's stronger in certain areas than the other and then we also think we're stronger than the other and then we have to come together and uh, <laughs> get a balance and sure. I guess those are some areas that's been you know that we have to overcome and even though you think you've got it all together sometimes the the other one will have a little better solution. Mm -hmm. and, and you know and it's like any other marriage you know sometimes it's money sometimes it's decisions on the children what's mm -hmm. way they're going yeah. and well, that's you fine. know to that's say fine. something or don't say something you yeah. know that's kind of where you have to be mm -hmm. but, that is important that's important yeah so that's what do you do to communicate communication is the first topic it's always so well, that's why we're the because if you're busy i know you you're working and and Jane Ann's running a household with umpteen kids. And homeschooling. Uh, homeschooling. How, how do you well, got to cool off from the heated, the heated conversation? <laughs> and then, then you got to look at it another way. And so, you know, that's pretty much what we do. So it's worked. The, are you all the opposite couple as well? Like we communicate so differently, right, honey? Mm -hmm. in that, and we have so many different so many different ideas on how to solve things that we have to, sometimes we have to hug at the line. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree, disagree. Yeah. So you have to go like, okay, my plan's clearly better. <laughs> well, I kind of use the philosophy, you know, I'm never wrong, but I'm not always right. <laughs> so I gotta work on that one. <laughs> That's true. I'll let Jane Ann see. I, I gotta. I want to see what she is. Yeah. Go um, ahead, hit her, Jane Ann. <laughs> yeah. It's. It took a while to learn how to communicate. I mean, you know, we've read books through through the years um, together. And uh, I think it's just um, our best communication usually is on date night. We do it. We do. We we intentionally do date nights. Yeah. Um, and then during the day, you know, like if I have well, in the beginning of our marriage or like when the kid when I was homeschooling and I had teenagers or, you know, young adults or, you know, middle school kids with the boys all stacked together. I was calling him every day. Because I just didn't understand. I didn't just understand boys. And now I have a better handle on that. But anyway, so I was calling them all the time. So through the phone conversations a lot. But usually I date nights. That. Yeah. And, you know, when just, and we would also, when the kids were little, we would say, okay, mom and dad are going to have this time to ourselves for a few minutes. You know, and we'd have to put a timer on. I remember that. We're like, you cannot interrupt us. You cannot say anything unless you have a, a limb falling off or you're like bleeding to death or something. So we did that for a while. And uh, so now, you know, it's not as, you know, having not having babies in the house. You know, we don't have babies. So now it's a lot of date nights are just phone, you know, through the day phone if something pops up. Got older kids who can babysit the younger ones. Yes, right, yes, no, yes. Good. But so you know, and we usually I've gotten better because I was a I always blamed him for not communicating, but then the Lord really showed me it was more me because I was I tried to very, tell her that but <laughs> I was very quick to speak out but not listen. And that was really I was missing a lot of uh I was missing a lot of information because I wasn't listening. 
Mm. Yeah, you know, one of the, the things that can be a weakness is <clears throat> we, we think we know what our spouse is going to say and do yes. before they do it. And, and a lot of times, Ellen and I do, you know, we've, we've given talks where we'll give a talk and, and uh, I'll be talking and she'll come along and she'll say the same thing, you know, but at the same time, um, it, it can be a problem in terms of assuming yes. what our spouse is uh, thinking and, and why they're doing what they're doing. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. And I think sometimes I think um, after a man, I learned that after a few minutes, they're they're just going blah 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 blah. That's all they're hearing. They're like, hey, that's all they're hearing. And then they go, "Honey, could you have an idea?" Like I always want a solution. Can you have a solution? He goes, "He goes, I'm listening." I go, "I see that." <laughs> just, <laughs> just, most women don't want a solution, though. I, I read lots of studies where women want just to have the man listen. I go, "No, no. Yes. I gotta have. I, I can listen to myself. But if I don't know the answer, I want to have like an answer. What do I do about this, honey? What I do? Right? I did a lot, Jim, and I, I, I feel like eventually I want to have to say that. But some people go like this: What do I do about, this? especially with children when they're little? What do we do about that? And he was always at work, so he couldn't take a call. So you're fortunate that Jared could take a call. Pat would always be really busy at work, and I couldn't communicate. So I, I just handled myself. <laughs> I was like, yeah, because I had two, two kids. That's mm -hmm. I did kids, but but we, I'd have five boys in a row. I just had three, and they were in a row. So. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, they're very active. They were very. Yeah. Active. I, I remember the. Well, days. yeah, and I think you know, in spite of our culture you know doing away with the maleness and femaleness there's clearly a difference oh. and young men mm -hmm. if they're good healthy young men they have that struggle in terms of going from this mom to no oh, now yes. I'm a man you know yes so there's, oh, yeah. there's a, you see that most of the time in terms of like they're they're mm -hmm. trying to push mom away and show mom i'm a man now you know and, yeah and you that's so true baby, you know yeah yeah. And you know, <laughs> and most women will say they know. I mean, I can almost distinctly remember each time that that happened with each son. Okay. And I, oh. at first I was offended. And then James Dobson, I really read a lot of his books. Mm -hmm. too, you know? Yeah, Dobson's good too. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and, and I think sometimes uh, I, we didn't have that much trouble with the boys. But one time, like one of my of sons, um, he was just really smart mouthed at his mother. And I don't remember. I grabbed him by the shirt collar. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few of those experiences. Uh, yeah, and, and, I, and I pushed him against the wall. And I said, don't you do that again. You, you may be uh, stronger and faster than I am because he was a teenager, but I'm meaner than you are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of these stories just like this vanish from my brain. Don't you think that you, that, you weren't really there? Oh, I wasn't there. See, well, then that's you were in another that's, room. So that's right. Yeah, that's that's a communication is see, it's so different. I would never communicate that way. <laughs> I know you never. <laughs> <laughs> the, it takes it takes the men with the boys. It really does. It yeah. does. And what do you think of the? I thought so. I I really I'm not going to say anything about blended and the, all the different things that are in the news, but I'm going to say this. I'm thankful to be a girl, and I'm thankful to be a feminine woman. And her genetics has two, and we have we have strong men. We have strong men, and they lead yeah. the family. Now we're not. At least I have come out of a, a season where I was really, really blindly submissive, and now we do. We're trying to make our teeter totter be even, you know, because it's really important. We're trying to take, take our life each day and try to embrace as in our oneness, and then have times when we go off and do our non one this time so we have to be you know, do our work or whatever we're not like feeling for joy at the hip because we both you know we're both retired at home and we work in our home but we truly have a lot of time we just do our work which is pat's a deacon in the catholic church i write and speak mm -hmm. so it's very important mm -hmm. think, to find your balance every family has yes. a different balance right i, I like what jr said about where it does the job best we do that all the time right and whoever does like apparently pat that we do <laughs> he does, he does, he does everything better. Well, well, you know, when, when, we first, when we were first married, Jane Ann, she grew up, well, she went to an all-girls college. So, you know, this was as, you know, I don't, I don't oppose the women, you know, climbing the big corporate ladder and going on up and everything. Right. But we had to get a balance for the marriage. You yeah, know, this sure. is not where it's going. And um, sure. I'm just a manly man. And we're going to have to look at this differently. Yeah. And we did, and she adjusted, and I had to adjust somewhat, but I didn't. I've been a little. <laughs> how, how long were you married before you started having kids? 
Uh, uh, we are honeymoon uh, right away. Uh, three months into the marriage, you know, she was pregnant. So, oh, yeah, wow. okay. You're, pregnant You're just like we were because Ellen was pregnant on our honeymoon. So. We didn't even know. We didn't even know that. <laughs> those days, you didn't find out your like after honeymoon right. in a month and then found out. But still, we're so thankful we that I grew up with Tyler. I'm the same age now. <laughs> <laughs> we're thankful for the young. You know, we realize everyone does it differently. We yes. started when I was young and Pat was seven years old. I mean, he wasn't as young, but I, I learned everything I could about. I never babysat. So it's very important. It worked for us. Some mm -hmm. women, they do their career first and then they have the children. Well, mm -hmm. they, right. you know, unfortunately, nature gets the best and they don't always have the time to conceive because they have, they're older. So I'm thankful for what I did. And I'm, I think that's great, y'all, because you had so many. And then, Christmas and Thanksgiving and all the holidays are so fun for us full. So oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what do you do? Yeah, because that can be a source of conflict. Oh, your power started holidays. Uh, in terms help. of what do you do in terms of your in-laws and, and uh, other fa extended family in holidays. terms of around holidays? Well, the, the few that we, you know, the couple that do have um, the in-laws, you know, they break the time up. So they may visit with them a while and then they always end up at our house by the evening. So, you know, it's, uh -huh. it's pretty good. They all have a balance there. Are you yeah. talking about our in-laws or the children? The children. The children. children. Oh, okay. And, oh, we have yeah. some family members upset with Whoever, you know, well, like, so when we were, um, when we were in yeah. uh, um, Montclair and, and here, first here, and we started having a bunch of kids, and we basically kids. said we would go visit uh, parents and um, uh, even Ellen's sister in Atlanta. And then we just, because we had so many kids, we're like, no, from now on, Christmas you all got to come to us at Christmas. You know, we're, mm -hmm. we're not going anywhere at Christmas time. Thanksgiving um, would always be mom's. Now, mom was a caterer and we had Thanksgiving there. It's her high holiday. But this year we chose to stay at home with my dog. I bought a little dog. It was <laughs> a lot of family members are mad at us and we don't know which ones. Yeah, we're really, we're walking on ice, isn't it? Are they? <laughs> We had so much fun. We really needed to break up the wedding. We had a wedding and we had, they had lots of animals at their house. And I didn't have that really right. anymore. So we're, yeah, thankful. Yeah. we're thankful we did what we did. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you faced this and you maybe don't get, get to get out of town as much as you'd like. Um, right. But in terms of just alone, is it because when we first came back, I we were around the family. We'd been around with the family quite a bit and a lot of activities and stuff. And, you know, and the family was all together because we tend to get together on Sunday night, we do everybody Sunday. for, yes, um, we do. And, yeah. and, uh, and so I said, you know, we're so glad to be here. We're so glad to be around so family, and around, but sometimes you all are exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. There's some high maintenance <laughs> so, sometimes, but with my mom and dad, because um, his mom, you know, in Chicago, we really didn't see her that much because she's so far away from Georgia, but my mom and dad, we were about two and a half hours, but they always said, you know, you, it's your time to start have your family. And they always just gave us permission. Like we, you know, you're always welcome, but That's you good. need to start yeah. your traditions. You have your family now and we completely understand. Yeah. That's good. That's, that could be a Chicago, it's for the audience out there. It could be kind of tense sometimes. You have to, what we did in our family, and Pat probably remembers too, is we, we picked holidays. Mom had Thanksgiving, we had Christmas. My uh, Pat's, Pat's mother down in Florida at the time, she passed away. She always had Easter and that. And now when Pat became a deacon, that was tough to get the cup for Easter. And we each kind of chose holidays. And I kind of want to do that again. But Jan, you're still at that stage where you chose, choose every holiday, right? I mean, like you're. <laughs> you get to yeah. pick every holiday. <laughs> right? like, I'm, I'm pretty much the that. sole house right now. Right. Well, Jocelyn and Matt just moved and they may. Uh, they may end up doing some things at their house, but right now it's just, yeah, it's our house. And and because I'm still the main cook, you know, I still do the, I mean, now, you know, our girls help out, but well, I participate in this year. Yes, yeah, so, but Jocelyn helps us out. You know, we, I think you know, that's great. Kind of to that. I'm going to tell you this advice keep that hold, Jay, because when you give it up, it's hard. Like a lot of our, our holidays aren't at our home. None. I mean, we said we're going to claim Christmas because the kids, you know, they like Sherry's house is the house, the larger. Yeah, mm -hmm. everyone likes. They just feel comfortable at home there. So if you lose, if you right. lose it, it's gone. <laughs> really? Okay, <laughs> that, that is that is a, that is a oh, word. That's, that's, a, yeah, that's, that's a good tip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it yeah. might be. I, I don't see it leaving us though. I mean, they love to come here. Every I know. Day. we sure. love it house too. Well, what we, what we um, do in our family is we 
we go to, we try to every year go to a different family for Christmas. For Christmas. Now, now most of them are now here in Evans. So yeah, thank you. Uh, all in Georgia. yeah, so that's not going to be a problem, except we have the family in Louisville. So this year we're going to Louisville. But then after Christmas, then they typically come down and we all get together a in a post-Christmas oh, day, um, like around New Year's or something, so that everybody gets together. So at least a couple of times a year, we all get together. Um, that's really, I think it's very important. Getting together families. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and I think that is something that couples need to talk about when they get married, you know, because some parents may not, they may just expect that you're going to show up every time right. I'm with, uh, yep. not be as lenient on, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. Some people, I mean, I have heard some stories, you know, from other people. Sure. That the, yeah. The parents That's expect good. them no matter what, come hell or high water, you're going to be here. <laughs> like no excuses. And yeah. they get mad. Well, you know, if, you know, if they want to, if they want to go somewhere, we, you know, we, yeah. we, had, we pretty much will let, you know, let them like mm -hmm. we had our one uh, daughter at 17, her friends up in Maine. Okay. So she was gone to Maine for Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but oh boy, on Thanksgiving, she was homesick. Yeah, she was and was, that's good, though. Know, hey, that's, that's, you know, that's it's a lot good. of fun here. It's yeah. a lot of fun. And, yeah. you know, she was yeah. missing out on that part. Well, I would yeah. tell you, I'm that large families have a way of making things appealing. We don't, I know Jan is like this as well, and JR and Pat and I is. We opened our home. We always had more than no. just our family. Now Charity, who takes over a lot of the holidays because of her great hospitality gift, she opens her home. To, it's always us and, uh, and friends and everyone. It makes it more fun. So yeah. I just encourage those out there thinking, should I have another baby or should we go forth? Yes. Right. And I, I think one of the things, uh, you know, like giving permission, we do that too. We always say to kids, we don't want this to be some kind of battle or competition. Sure. Yes. Right. So I think that's you good. feel like you got to go with the uh, other family. Uh, that's okay. You know, we always want you around, but at the same time, we don't want you to feel like you have to be there. Um, mm -hmm. And and family in terms of, because our family does, when we do get together, yep. there may be little snippets oh, of little it. fusses, but there's, there's never any usually real big battle. I mean, we pretty much get along and have yeah, a good time here. together. Um, yeah. And so uh, one of the good news recently for us is- um, It's very good news is that um, Tyler's wife, Tomoko, who's from Japan, she's, she hates cold weather and they spent a lot of time in Florida. So we thought, oh, they're gonna probably end up living in Florida. Well, they decided they're gonna be here in Georgia near us. So. Oh, good, hey, good. Good, uh, good, 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 good. Yeah, and so, Josh is already home since so come home. He loves Hawaii, but he wants to eat. The men have more fun together than the women. The women more makes to do the chores and the childcare, but, they're still, they just enjoy raising kids right. and cousins mm -hmm. and all that. And you have all that to look forward to. <laughs> so well, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. I, I mean, I'm going to have, you know, I hope Lord willing, you know, five, uh, you know, daughter, daughter loves. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love that. Don't worry about finances now. So you want to well, I was, I was going to say in, um, in terms of giving also one of the things that we always say to, especially our son-in-law, most of our son-in-laws come from small families. Like two or one. Ours, ours, yeah, ours a, he's a and So we say, look, and, and uh, we say, hey, if you feel overwhelmed, it's okay to you know go outside or you know, whatever. <laughs> but we won't we won't be offended, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. As you said it, um, Sean's wedding. This is another tip because you have you have daughters and then you have sons. What did you tell us, Sean's wedding, Kendra and Sean? Remember, he was preaching to Kendra and Sean just got married two weeks ago or three, and he was preaching. And he said, now Sean. Your job is to protect your wife from the family. <laughs> <laughs> so we, the boy, our boys are more because sometimes uh, our, our sisters, our kids, is, our daughters can come on a little strong. Uh, and, love in love. You know, <laughs> so, uh, hey, it, you know, you may need to step in, and that's okay. Yeah. 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 They are. I see ours as they get older. They're they're real, you know, protective in a way. Like you know, they just kind of want to hold that. I kind of want to do a little control. Yeah, we try not to tell them. Listen, <laughs> everybody doesn't have to have the approval of who you date. Oh, that's but good. you know, it just you know, it could be overwhelming. The boys yeah. bring a date by. It's like you know, there's a lot of us, and there's a <laughs> lot of comments that come out. Oh, yeah. I said they cannot be offended. They're very strong. You know, well, just <laughs> now I'll tell you, Jr. My my approach was my daughters. Uh, you know, they would come to me and say, "Well, you know, they have bring a date by the house," and they said. Well, so and so thinks you don't like him, and I'd say, "What's the problem?" <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
<laughs> no, we didn't screen them though, because we taught in marriage encounter and we taught marriage engage encounter. We used to teach it here in this diocese. And we taught that no one's going to know that he's the one or she's the one except for you. You can right. listen to comments about parents and friends. They're trying to help, but ultimately you got to live with that person the rest of your life. The right. Catholic was the Catholic covenant about marriage. We're going to share that the Catholic the catechism, the, what the two words we said, what are Catholics called doing marriage? Two words like unitive and procreative. Yeah, so that, that they have to be right. the one to stay with you them for life. And, through God, mm -hmm. I mean, with Christ in your marriage, you become one. And Paul calls it a mystery. Mm -hmm. And then you get to be co-creators mm -hmm. with God in terms of having kids. And that's expected. And and what a great opportunity, you know. But yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And sometimes they have a large show. They're not really the kids. They come in. They're insecure, too. The people, the, the new in-law, unless they're some of them are not at all, but they get intimidated because they're from the small family. They just, they don't act like themselves. Then they, then we see them like as they keep coming, they get more comfortable with yeah, us. We will hug and them. Then, Even though they don't like hugs, we still hug them. <laughs> oh yeah, you <laughs> got to. Yeah. And, and over time. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And so for us, you know, some of our, we see a uh, real bonding Oh yeah, uh, because the sisters uh, mm -hmm. are bonded pretty much anyway. Sure. Um, right. But the the son in laws, we didn't have many daughter in laws until now we, we now we have two. That was. But our son in laws, um, they are all bonded in terms of our sons because they play golf and stuff, do hunting yeah. and, and shooting and stuff like that together. So that helps Is all them together. Is it harder for the daughter-in-laws to bond? I think it looks like it may be a little easier for the son-in-law. I mean, you know, the sons and the son-in-loves to bond more than the, what it, what, from y'all's experience. Well, to the daughter we're new with that in terms of our, our uh, <laughs> daughter-in-law. Yeah, because Tomoko's, y'all, Tomoko's are going to be married. Because they tend to be uh, they protective. And actually, <laughs> our, our daughters, will protect the new uh, daughter-in-laws from the other daughters. Some oh. step <laughs> in and, uh, and uh, uh, verbally at least slap them up the side of the head, you know. Says, that's like, Stop that's that. quite the dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, want them, you want them to come back, you know. You don't want to you know, hurt their feelings and we're yeah. real open. I mean, yeah. if you're thinking it, it's coming out around here. Okay. Yeah, just, some, we don't, some of them don't have filters. Yeah, and, and without filters, you don't know what's going to be said. <laughs> you know, and you know what? And yeah, especially you, after a few drinks. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're oh, yeah. married. Yeah. Um, my daughter, Tion, tells the daughter in laws before they come in the family if you have a problem with mom, you come to me and I'll talk to her. <laughs> I'm not even that, that scary. Is that, like, I just, that is scary. I'm but gonna have one like that. I can you tell have to you. Be able to, <laughs> you have to be willing to like. There's a lot of tears with women. <laughs> you yeah, know? So yeah that's really good though. Different. I like that. Well, she does. She we want to encourage that it's fun having a large family. It's oh, not it's so you know something that's terrible. You know, and the, the the kids have not gone without. Even though you, you know, if you're just one of them, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of love. And there's things that are of large value that you can't put a price tag on. Thank and you. they all keep coming back. And, and right. we just want yeah. their spouses, both boys and girls, that they understand that, hey, it works. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you think, you know, wow, they're from a big family. How'd they do it? You know, yeah. God sure. steps that's in, a, takes care of it. Mm -hmm. That's very good. That's a good testimony. I, I just recently wrote about, you know, I like to write about John Murphy and I wrote about Pat's aunt. And I said, I used to think, um, I tell Francis, you know, that he, remember, that's good though. Their testimony is your life. You can say it yeah. to the kids, but the testimony is looking at someone's life and seeing God was with them and they're walking in their Catholic faith and he, and your life itself will show your fruit. Mm -hmm. you I think that fit in. I guess I'm yeah. like off the subject, which no, I that's do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's that's right. That's know, one point. of the things that we haven't talked about then, and this they're going to they're going to face too in terms of our previous right. talks okay. is, is you know in terms of the faith. Well, that's good. Uh, you know what's the, what's the chances your kids are going to you know leave the faith? And they're that's pretty good, subject. even you know. Well, we we've had one son that got challenged a little bit in that, Why? and he's not moved. Yeah, you know, and gets question after question about the Catholic faith. 
Well, that's good. You know, yeah. I, he's been, he's been, he's been really strong. He's uh, looked yeah. up scripture, backed it all up. And, sure. you know, the, the girls just have been just hammering on him, but he's not moved by it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, the first thing he tells yeah. him when he goes out. My faith is, you know, very important to me. And yeah. Oh, so great. I don't know. You have yeah. big names. Uh, we're we're going to be praying for that son that starts with the name Jay because all the, all the bomb breaks. All the different Jay, days. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, you, just, you never know. I mean, you, you're always surprised at your family who has a calling on their life. You never know. Right. You know same for a priest, maybe, you know, just to be a leader in the faith is this generation's mm -hmm. taking the time. So we, are you going to ask more yeah, questions? I'm going to ask about finances because that's their strength. And I just like you, they take it a course, right? Jan, you, you and JR have taken a yes. course. Because finances can get big, it can get big and fall. I mean, get down that slippery slide and then there you are. Splash. Oh, yeah. So oh, tell us about that. that. Uh, that's, you know, one of the most common, right? That, yes. is that, that can be a big pitfall, you know, like, hey, Jane how much money are you spending this week? You know, and well, you know, I got this or I got that. And I said, well, we don't really set up a real strong budget. I just try to kind of keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it'll, it could get a little heated in that area. In the beginning of our marriage, it was very heated. Oh, yeah. That was like that. We almost got divorced over money. Sure. And, uh, um, you know, we were separated and everything. And we've been through the we've been through the highs and the lows of money. I mean, you name it. We've been through it. And um, but God, Loving kids. God is faithful. Yeah. Yeah. God is faithful. It, and, you know, but we have done we've actually done two courses. We did Jim Saman's course for a while back. Yeah. And then we did Dave Ramsey about a year Ramsey, ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, what did you learn, um, y'all? Please tell us. Tell us what y'all learned. We want the audience to hear some tips. I had to set up a budget and not stick to it. <laughs> That's about so far I got, you know. I'm, okay. I, I, have, well, I keep begging for a budget. I, mean, the budget. I, I used to get offended when he would like, okay, so did so I see, you know, just ask the questions, like the knit, you know, the little like. I would take it as what does he not trust me with money or I mean you know I I used to be that way I'm not that way now but then because I would get offended and that would start a fight and then it would just you know be a you know from there but um but but really I mean finances is something that you need to discuss before you get married I think yes. you need to really kind of have an understanding of where you know, because I think it's like how you grew up. Okay. So, you know, how uh, uh, is different yep. with me and then the, the mom, you know, the wife, you know, you, you just each come with uh, expectations of money and, you know, you just have to, I don't know, you're, you're going to fight about money. Every couple's going to fight about money at some yeah. point in time. That is just like almost a golden rule. <laughs> I don't know. but yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, uh, rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I mean, yeah, it, rule. yeah, you're going to, you're going to fight about it and you're going to have arguments about it. And, um, I don't know, I've, I've learned a lot of, uh, I've grown, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like a gold star. we'll take okay. that as a compliment. Uh, <laughs> we, did have, we did have money in the early days. I would just say, just buy milk and bread. And well, eggs. yeah, a lot of people would think because I was a doctor. That's it. I go that, right. that so we whenever we did marriage prep, we usually didn't um, talk about money to couples. We'd bring in somebody who was really poor, had a big family like y'all. Yeah, um, and um, <laughs> but because we were in the community, right, and the tithe, and then you had to support the school, which is too. Um, and then in the early days, uh, physicians didn't make, especially in academics, make that big of salaries. And so mm -hmm. literally there were times when I'd have to say, honey, yeah, only, you can only buy bread and milk. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But, yeah. but yeah. the difference was for us was that um, I knew that if I needed money, I, I would have my parents I could look to. Mm -hmm. In fact, my parents would um, finance loans for cars mm -hmm. and good. stuff. And I would pay them interest, and it, but it would be less interest than the bank, mm -hmm. but it would be more interest than they would get from the, from the savings. So it was a win-win. And I, yeah. was, I always paid them. I can't say the same necessarily for my <laughs> kids. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you, know, you know, they say, set a good example. 
It doesn't always yeah. work. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, has their own free will. Sure. Yeah. It can be a wealthy, empty nester. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. Lesson. Don't lend to your children. Yeah, it's not a good thing. If, if you lend to your ch children, there's a you know, good chance. You just got to see it. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've yeah, been there, done that one. But we, yeah. we had, we've had good times that, well, I made plenty of money and then and drive around trying to figure out how to spend it, yeah. which was fine. But, oh. and that was during a time where our marriage got unhealthy. I mean, oh, hey. uh -huh. and we went through a period that, you know, we thought we were going to get divorced. Mm -hmm. And um, That's I even thought about, I'm going to quit work. I said, this is going to cost me so much. I might as well just quit what I'm doing. <laughs> I couldn't do that. And and support. I was oh, making a fortune and she's driving a new car and I'm paying the house payment, the car payment. And sending her a big check every week. I said, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But then, you know, most of the times it would be on a problem where, you know, people are not making enough. Well, we were making plenty at the time. Yeah. yeah. And, but, no you know, we've adjusted since then that, you know, we you have to come to terms where each of you understand the money situation. That's you know, how much can you spend? Okay. You know, got to put a freeze on anything extra right now. And mm -hmm. once you get an understanding of it, it works. Right. Oh, yeah. I do have a test. I have a little testimony. Uh, okay. We're talking about the truck, the, the, uh, the ice cream truck. Is it a good <laughs> okay, so I think there comes a time when the wife needs to, you know, if, I'm not talking about like you're saying, Ellen, you know, if, if it's sin, you know, don't it's give in. If, you know, yes. But so we were coming home from church one How day. How many children we have now? We were driving a 12 passenger van. I think we had like <laughs> seven. So anyway, we dro drove past this. A guy had an old ice cream truck for sale. It was a, it was a bread truck. He converted to an ice cream truck. Yeah. Where he sold ice cream to the kids in the neighborhood, and he had even a little bubble gum machine. If you didn't have any money, you could put a nickel or a penny yeah. in there and get a good bubble gum. Nice. So anyway, go ahead. Okay, so we're driving down. He's like, oh, well, good. yeah, because he's a really good buyer with cars and things like that. You know, equipment. I don't ever question anything like that. But this time he was like, I'm going to buy that truck. And I was like, what? I go, we need like the kids need shoes right now. We need, it was summer was coming on. I was like, no, we need shoes. We need, we need some clothes. I'm like, no, you can't buy that truck. So um, he went up the hill with the boys and he came down with the truck, with the ice cream truck. I was ringing the bell. The kids thought it was full ice oh, cream. Oh, the kids were like, they loved it. They were like, was this a childhood memory? What? <laughs> Is this really yeah. a guy yeah, yeah. Luke Henry? Oh, I was so mad. But so but the thing is, in one week, he like cleaned up the truck and everything and he sold it. So you bought it for you may I I, I only gave the guy and I forgot what he like wanted for. I gave I think I gave I gave uh I want to say I gave seven hundred dollars and she's you know the kids could use shoes and this that, and the other and I said, Well, that's okay. I, I really like this truck, I'm gonna do something with it. <laughs> So then I turned around and I sold it yeah. for fourteen hundred. Yeah, and I put the money back in the bank account. Uh, took all the kids out for shoes. Yeah, bought them all shoes. Oh. Gave Jane Ann a couple hundred dollars, oh. and we all came out happy. I said, you know, there's your shoes right here. Here's some money. Uh, right. I, I guess kidding. my word is, you know, to other women, um, even if you're, um, you know, sometimes there's just. I think for me, it was a test to trust the Lord that my husband's wisdom was you know more than what i what mm -hmm. i could see because i mean this is his this is his area of expertise he can it's crazy <laughs> that he can just buy a, a trailer or something like that and then turn around and make triple on it i mean that's he has a gift in that area that's so awesome. that was the beginning of just really trusting god that okay my husband is you know it's okay it's you know mm -hmm. i've never we've never been without food we've never been without electricity or you know things like that but <laughs> i think sometimes you just have to trust that that you know, the Lord's is, is going to do what he wants to do, you know, and so, so it may not make sense on the, that's right. Sure. You know, with the numbers, cool. it may not make sense, you know, looking at the bank account, but you know, so anyway, that's, that's our little, and I always tell that story <laughs> because it really taught me a lesson. Mm -hmm. So great. Do you tell the stories about Christmas? Cause it, when I first met you, you told me how y'all do Christmas and how you oh, yeah. pray for, you know, that's what I mean. Yeah. Tell so us. we, that's a trust fund of the ladies out there praying for Christmas gifts. It's right, we're, we've been doing that, and we still do it. So for we've been here 29 years. So basically, uh, we always pray for the amount of money we need for Christmas. 
And always, always. So this has been going on for 29 years because we never went into debt for Christmas ever. And uh, we would pray for the amount of money and the amount of money came. And then that's what we would use for Christmas. So yeah, we still do it to this day. So oh, nice. And then God would provide unbelievable and place you didn't expect. I oh, it's, it's been, it's unbel been, it's been, it's no, been it's unbelievable. Been we have, oh yeah. I mean, one time he lost a job uh, during that recession time and you were working for Volvo at the time. Yep. And I just, I have a, I have actually a binder where people would send us cards or they like send us money. I even made, I, I have it in a binder just like as a trophy sure. to remind us, to remind our, our children to one day look at it, to say, thank you, Lord, because he does provide. provide. He really does provide. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, you have not because you ask not. <laughs> right. So that's all very I, I think, though, too, one of the things that in our culture, yeah. and we, we talked about this in, in our marriage prep, too, in, in terms of uh, we try to not focus so much on gifts yeah. during Christmas. Right. Um, we did one gift. That, yeah. <laughs> but the trouble is, Grandma and Grandpa didn't get the message. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we would have this ridiculous amount of gifts but the thing is is that um it's about jesus that's we have good. a really hard time separating out wants from that's needs that's true. Right, right, right right culture and so um that's a big problem and, and our, even our kids have a problem with that in terms of separating out uh, needs and wants and and when they're little um, right and, and you know what does scripture say We're, everything's belongs to God right 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 and and our kids even belong to God that's right yes and mm -hmm. and uh so uh, praying for them and then asking God for wisdom obviously is important in terms of your money your kids what you do with them and then when they get to the adults uh, you know you keep interacting and dealing with them but part of it is really is their God's problem at that point you know, right. You give your input when you can, but you you're limited in what you influence. Exactly. You can have, right? Oh yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. That makes it real good. Right? So you got me so so. But we, I'm so, unfortunately, we've enjoyed the bomb breaks, and we have to all say our last words because we out the clock. Really uh, okay. It, it takes for us. It says what time. So I really want to say. Well, they're thinking of what they want to say with their last words. I want to say this. You know, I got a scripture before the show started, and it was, "If my people were called by my name." will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I myself will hear from heaven and heal their land. We all know that's 2 Chronicles 7, 14. The land that you have in your marriage is your heart. And sometimes, you know, arrows get shot at the heart, not on purpose, hopefully. And you have, you're broken inside. We're all broken somewhere. But in a marriage, you have to come together and, and right. pray and pray for each other. And I pray certain prayers every day and and pray for other marriages that are struggling. Don't be the instigator that makes the marriage worse. <laughs> and then when they if across you face a pitfall, take one, take one side and one take the other. Because you know what? Jesus will help you carry that cross and he will supply your needs and he'll he'll make that heart anew, the hardest stone. So who wants to go first on the seminar? You stop at the last, right? Because you're the one you know, sum up the show. Do you well, it, you know <laughs> so the opposite. One of the things I always try to do in terms of uh, most any talk I give in terms of um, looking at being pro-life and doing God's will is that the um, people, you know, in, in Genesis, we see this effect in the relationship between Adam and Eve, which affects our relationship mm -hmm. with God. And so understanding that helps us to understand why it's difficult. Why, as J.R. said, in terms of you got to work at it. You got to yes. work with your relationship because our sinful nature and the devil's at work trying to destroy marriages and family. And so being on prayer and, and uh, working at, you know, uh, being one, um, it's not going to just happen. Now, because we're baptized, we have the sacraments that also gives us grace to, to be who we are supposed to be mm -hmm. a, as Christians. But it's going to be a lifelong work. And it's mm -hmm. not going to just, you can rest on your walls and everything's going to be peachy keen. Oh, it, no. It gets better as, as time <laughs> goes on. There's something else that's um, you okay. Yeah, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> yeah, because the devil, you know, he's, he's, he's always looking for your weak areas. 
or the or the oh, Lord, yeah. the areas that in terms of what he wants us to change in. And so things will pop up. And so knowing that um, and having that expectation, as we always like to say, wounded people are hurting people, caring for yeah. wounded, hurting people, you know, because right. we're, we're all wounded in some way or hurting in some mm -hmm. way. So how do y'all want to sum it up? That was very good. Very good. What do you want to do to sum up the show? I just want to say to, you know, all couples that learn how to communicate and um, also never go to bed angry, that's for sure, because that, you know, you, I just think that's really important. The scripture talks about that. And, um, and, and a book I would recommend reading is The Five Love Languages. What is it? The Five languages of love that is really a good book um years ago we have read that and we did a class on it and that's really important i think too because you i think as a wife you need to learn how your love language to your husband so that's that would right. be mine and Jay, you ask, oh sorry good good point i think so all reading together is always but in practice jr yeah it's i mean we just it, working it out i mean even if you're having a bad day and the two of you are just not getting along, you know, being silent is not the right way. You know, open it up. Once you talk through it, you, know, you might not agree with it, but, you know, <laughs> you'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah, one, one of the things I always say to Ellen is, is I'm not going anywhere. You may be mad at me, yell at me, but I'm not going anywhere. I don't, <laughs> but anyways, I don't go anywhere either. She doesn't I'm, yell out loud. I Does she lock me inside? I, I, so I, I, can't I, 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 I nicely nag him and tell him what's bothering me. And then he goes, you're, you're, you're saying too many, you're saying this too many times. Like, oh, we have to find a solution. I think got a solution. We had our show with a song. This has been Deacon and Deer. And Jay and JR have been our guests. The bomb breaks. They're on fire for the Lord. And we're going to sing, we wish you a Merry Christmas with you already. <laughs> no, sing with us. Sing with us. No, sing with us, right? We wish, wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. 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 Christmas.